What is up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? It is Joe coming at you guys with the long-awaited painting tutorial. Yes, hell does freeze over, and I swear to crap, I am going to have this out by today. I know I'd have it out by yesterday, but I'm a bastard. Oh, well, get over it. So, this is my Wasteland Hunter helmet, which I showed you guys in a previous video very, very briefly. I'm actually quite proud of this helmet simply because of the fact that it's my first time doing weathering quite this detailed on this scale. And uh, the second reason I'm proud of this helmet is because I made this in one night with no template. And it was my first time ever uh, making a helmet. So I'm very happy with how it came out. Um, I like it. And as a matter of fact, a fan of my Facebook page recently bought this from me. So this is going to be shipped out rather soon with a bunch of... Foam. Foam peanuts. Yes. Hope you have fun making a mess, bro. Alright. Now. I'm not going to be showing you guys how to go all crazy and nuts with the weathering and detailing like this tonight. Okay? That having been said, I am going to teach you guys how to do some pretty legit stuff. So let's get started. Alright. Now. When I make my wasteland stuff, there's four degrees of damage or weathering or whatever that you'll see on the outfit. The first degree is this, okay? Nothing too special, nothing too spectacular, just a um, medium and a light silver that were um, put over an EVA foam rectangle that was prepared with three layers of Plasti Dip and two layers of Rust-Oleum Oil Rubbed Bronze Spray Paint. All right, cool? I actually made six of these just so that I could demonstrate this process clearly. I actually uh, made six because I knew that I'd screw one or two up along the way. We'll paint one of those in just a bit. Now, tonight's tutorial is only going to be getting to this level, okay? The next video I make on this subject, I'm going to show you guys how to do all this fine detail cracking and all that kind of stuff. Next video is going to be bullet impacts and stress marks and stress fractures and all that kind of stuff. And the next video is going to be full retard. I don't think this is even metal. It's just slightly secured rust. Holy crap, what the hell. Yeah, awesome sauce. All right, cool. So, as I said, this is just a very, very basic piece. This is just medium uh, gunmetal silver with uh, very brighter silver highlights. Okay, that's it. This doesn't even really have a lot of rust or any huge amount of uh, weathering on it. This is just a relatively standard piece, but this is where I'm going to start you guys out, simply because of the fact that this is a graduation process, okay? I'm not going to start you guys out with something basic like this, then in the span of one video, expect you to go full retard all the way to something like this. Awesome. All right, cool. So, now that we have that covered... Let's get to work, boys and girls. Hey, boss. Time for painting, boss. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to do this, all you are going to need is a chrome spray paint and matte black acrylic paint and a brush. Awesome sauce. Well... And you're going to have to uh, want to prepare your pieces. See, that's just it. The reason why I prepared this with two layers of this uh, Rust-Oleum color as well is because the Rust-Oleum, uh, this particular dark color, uh, this contrasts really, really well against the silvers and stuff like that. It makes them a lot more noticeable. It makes them a lot brighter. Actually, as a matter of fact, if you know how to dry brush pretty decently, you can actually just keep this as your base color and put the silver over it, and you don't even have to use any of the black because it will already have the shadowing and shading that you want already because it has that black background color. So, to prepare these pieces, I did three layers of Plasti Dip on all sides, above, sides, front, back, yada yada, and then I did two layers of that uh, Rust-Oleum paint. So, this is where we're starting from. Now, basically, what we're going to want to do is first off, I highly, highly suggest being in a well-ventilated area simply because of the fact that, well, it's spray paint. It's not good for you to breathe. This shit is an air freshener. Although some of you would disagree. 
some of you are special. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take just regular average rag. You could do this with a paper towel. You could do this with an old shirt, whatever. Fold it in a quarter or wherever has an available slot for you to spray paint that isn't crusty with previous spray paint. And you fold it over your finger like such. Shake up the can. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now see, that's actually a little, a little bit too much. I got, I went a little uh, overboard there and I put a little bit too much on it. So, that's fine. Dab that excess off on the back and we're good. Now when I do this, I like to approach it usually diagonally, going down from the left or going down from the right, and then going up from the left and up from the right, whatever. You can basically do this however you want. But this is how I usually start out. You don't want it looking super uniform or anything because then it kind of loses its uh, post apoc looking touch or... Yeah, whatever. You basically just want to make it look a little uh, hectic and disorganized. You just want it to look like wrought iron. Or old steel, whatever floats your boat. Now notice I'm just doing relatively light sideways sort of scratching brushing motions. All right, cool. Now, for this particular piece, I made it look a little bit silver, but that's fine because we can darken that up with the black paint. So this is what we have so far. This is just something that's very, very basic. Already, it looks decent. It looks passable as a piece of like really old looking steel, but we want to darken it a little bit. We don't want this thing to look entirely brand new. It can look like um, a piece that's seen minimal traffic or whatever, but we still want it to look as though it's a piece that's seen some use or seen some weather. So, basically what we're going to do is, if you remember this acrylic paint that we put here from earlier, this black acrylic, I suggest getting your brush wet beforehand, by the way, because that prevents the, uh, the acrylic from uh, drying too fast. And we do what I call the L's, meaning we go on here, get it right there where this second piece meets the bottom piece, get it right there in the corners. And you want it on there relatively thick, too. You can also put a little bit on the top. All right, cool. And the reason why I do an L shape at a time is because otherwise this particular brand of paint has a tendency to dry pretty fast, which is awesome, but kind of sucks if you're trying to do decent weathering. Now, you'll notice that when I'm doing this, I hold it like so, I hold it on the edges, and then I brush down, like that. You want that black paint to stay along that corner, like that, okay? Eh. So then, also, once you've done that, once you've got the majority of it off like that, just by scooping down, go sideways a little, go maybe this way a little bit, you know? As I said, you don't really want any particular pattern to show up. So, now we do the second L. Now this is just the corners that we're doing right now. Alright, here we go. All right, now what we're going to do is the top. The top is actually really, really simple. Take a bunch of it, get a bunch on the brush, and just go to frickin' town with it, okay? Get a bunch on there, get it around the rivets and stuff like that, because when you wipe it off, what you're going to want to do is you're going to not want to wipe around the rivets a lot. 
because it rivets are areas that would be a bit more difficult to clean because dirt tends to congeal there more. So, let that dry just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit. And there we go. Done. That, I, I, I shit you not when I say that's quite literally it. For base level weathering, that's actually pretty much it. Or, if you wanted to, if you wanted to look like this was a piece that uh, maybe got, uh, was outside for a long time, but someone came along and changed it, and uh, say they dropped it and it got scraped or something, what you could do, you could put the rag back over your finger, and take your chrome, Get a little bit of a liberal, very liberal spritzing of that on there. Just do one dab, and then very lightly, very quickly, just on the edges, just go. And there you go. This is the end result. Nothing too amazing or spectacular or anything like that, if my freaking camera will focus. But yeah. That's what you're left with. Some people say it looks a little bit cheesy. Well, maybe with that level of black around the edges, I think I went a little bit overboard with the black. You can do it a much smaller amount, but yeah. With that bright silver in there, if the light hits it just right, I think that makes it look really interesting. Um, yeah. Now, see, on the helmet I just showed you guys, the helmet was actually a mix of numbers three and four. Because, see, look, we got all this battle damage over here, and we got these big scrapes where stuff flew by the head, like fragmentation flew by the head and stuff like that. And this over here, I emulated like a bullet or a blaster mark or something like that. And, uh, yeah. There we go. Believe it or not, what I just showed you guys, what I just did right now, that's literally how simple this is. It's dry brushing with spray paint and acrylic paint. I shit you not when I say that is literally it. Um, I will definitely make another video at some point going into further detail on this. Obviously because I'm doing levels 3 and 4 here. But, um... Yeah, that's it for the time being. I hope you guys found it somewhat educational and enjoyable. If not, well, sucks for you. I love you, babies. Bye. <laughs>